In this video, we're going to look at box plots. We can use box plots to gain a visual representation of the distribution of a data set. We use what we call a five figure summary to make the box plot. We have the lowest value, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the highest or largest value. If we have two or more box plots on the same set of axes, we can look at making comparisons about the distribution of the data sets. So we can look at the spread of the data and we can look at a central measure and that is the median. What we're going to do in this video is just work through some basic examples and look at comparing box plots. Let's start off now with a question that involves a cumulative frequency curve. We're told the cumulative frequency curve below shows the time taken for students in 11T3 to complete a maths question in an exam. The quickest pupil took 62 seconds and the slowest person took 132 seconds. So here's our cumulative frequency, here's the time in seconds and we'll have now grouped data for this. The first question is in part A, how many people were there in the class? The cumulative frequency is the running total. So we can see now there were 40 people in the class. In part B, we're asked to draw a box plot with an estimate for median, lower quartile and upper quartile. So when we're drawing a box plot, we want five things. We want the lowest value, which in this case is going to be 62, just here. We want the largest value, which is going to be 132. Then we need the lower quartile, the median and the upper quartile. We have 40 people here. So if we want to find an estimate for the median, we're going to take that reading from the 20th person. All I've done is split the data set into 2. 40 divided by 2 is 20. I draw across and then I drop a perpendicular down. So that looks to be about 102 seconds. So what I'm going to do is just write here and we can write that the median, so the median, sometimes you might hear this being called the uh, Q2 or the second quartile, the median is going to be approximately 102 seconds. So this gives us now a central measure. The median is an average for the middle person. Let's now look at the lower quartile. The lower quartile is when we split these 40 people into four. So the lower quartile is taken off the 10th person. When we think about now the 10th person, it's telling me now that 25% of the people who sat this paper were doing the question in less than 88 seconds or 88 seconds or less. So this gives us now the quickest 25% of people. So if we put this on, we can say now that the lower quartile, the lower quartile or Q1 is give or take about 88 seconds. So we can see now that around 50% of people, half of the students did it in 102 seconds or quicker and one quarter did it in 88 seconds or quicker. We're now going to look at the upper quartile. We split now the data set and we want it now taken off three quarters of the way in. That gives us 30, we read across and we drop the perpendicular down. We can see that that's going to give me about 114. So this now is the upper quartile. So upper quartile is going to be approximately 114 seconds. I can draw my box plot off here. So let's just write all of these in seconds. There we go. I can complete my box plot at the bottom of this cumulative frequency curve if I like. If I did that, I would need to consider now the lowest value, which is 62, which can go just here. I've got my highest value, which is 132 seconds. That would go just there. Then at this stage, we would simply draw the lines down like so, and we'd have one just here, one just here, one just here, and we could go ahead and connect this up. So what I have now is the 
lower quartile, the median and the upper quartile. We would then have our whiskers. So the whiskers this way show now the quickest 25% of people and the whiskers this way show us the slowest 25% of people. So this now is going to be the lower quartile, the median and the upper quartile. We call the difference between the lower quartile and the upper quartile the interquartile range. We'll look at a calculation for that shortly. So what I'm going to do is just put this on and again it's fairly accurate if you have this, in fact let's just make that really quite accurate. If you have this you will be able to see it in an exam and you will be very accurate with your working. So that's going to give me now the lower quartile, we set, uh, sorry, the lowest value, we said the lower quartile was about 88, which I can put just there. We've got now the median value, which is our measure of central tendency. We're trying to locate a middle point. On average, the person or the average score for the person here or the time in seconds was 102 seconds. So we now put the upper quartile on and the upper quartile gives us 114 which is just there and then we had 132. So I'm going to connect this up, I'm going to have my box and then my whiskers. Sometimes these are referred to as box and whisker diagrams. So there's the box and then we can put the whiskers on. So going ahead and putting these on. So let's see what we've got here. What we have is the following. We have the quickest 25% of people. We have the most representative 50% of people in this particular box here. And then we have the slowest 25% of people. We call now the, uh, this part right here the interquartile range. The interquartile range is the lower quartile subtracted from the upper quartile. And we're asked to find that shortly. So if we have a small interquartile range, we can say that there was less variation in the most representative 50% uh, of the pupils and they were more consistent. If we have a massive box here, we can say that they're less consistent. The idea of the interquartile range and this particular box is that we don't have the fluctuations of potentially crazy scores. So if we had a really quite uh, able student in here who did it in, let's say, five seconds, and we had a really slow student who did it in 160 seconds, when we look at the range, the range is going to be massive, yet our interquartile range might show a lot more consistency in the most representative 50% of students. So let's go ahead and look at that. So this is a box plot. And if you wanted to write on, you could do. So this now is the lower quartile or quartile one. This is the median. This is the upper quartile. This is going to be the lowest value. So just writing in lowest. And this is going to be the highest. So just jotting those down, that is our box plot. So the interquartile range, the IQR. So the IQR is going to be equal to the upper quartile minus the lower quartile and that gives us the middle 50% of people in our data set. So this time we would have 114 minus the 88, so let's write that minus 88, so that's going to give me now 26. The smaller this value is, the more consistent the students are and the less variation there is. So, for example, if you're uh, growing tomatoes and you want these to be as big as possible, you want this interquartile range to be very small and somewhere near the highest value. If you're looking at times and you want to complete something really quickly, we would be down here somewhere. So, let's state some observations about the performances of the class. We can say now that 50% of students did this in less now than 102 seconds. We can say now that the slowest person, we already know that from the, the information, took 132 seconds. We could state information about the range. 
It's more the interquartile range that we're interested in as that's going to give us a better indication of now this measure of spread. We can say now that 50% of students, the most representative 50%, were within 26 seconds of each other. So in this part right here, there's only 26 seconds separating the middle 50%. We could say that 25% of students took less than 88 seconds. 50% of students, as we know, took less than 102 seconds. And 75% of students took less than 114 seconds. So there's some observations. When we go on to the next example, it's really important that you state these in context. So just to state a median value is not sufficient. We need to put this in context. So there we go, that's a nice question from a cumulative frequency curve. Let's now look at this scenario. Uh, this was a, uh, an experiment for boys and girls doing a maths test. Um, so here the boys have got math scores, the girls seem to only have math scores. I don't think that matters. Um, we can go ahead and do this. So what we're going to do is draw a box plot for each of these on the same scale. When we compare box plots, it's really quite important that we do put them on the same scale so we can see what's going on. What we're then going to do is make some comparisons in context. So let's have a look. This is out of 100. So I'm going to go ahead and just put on uh, an axis. So let's put on the axis and we will go. So that will be 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So I'm going to put these on and we can just label this up. So let's do that. So right here, we're going to have now 0. We will have 10. We'll have 20, 30. 40, 50, we've got 60, we've got 70, 80, 90, and 100. So I'm going to write down on here the test score. So this now is the test score out of 100. So I'm just showing the examiner I know what I'm doing. Test score out of 100. So let's go ahead and draw a box plot for the boys. So what we want then is the following. We've got the lowest score. The lowest score is going to be 12. 12 seems to be about here. So let's go ahead and do that. We will have 12. So that's going to be my lowest score. I then have a lower quartile of 46. That looks to be 46 just here. The median is 52. So let's put the median just here. The upper quartile is 67, which looks to be about there. Let's put that on. Then we're going to have the highest score, which is going to be 91, which is going to be just here. So I can go ahead and connect this up, and we have the box plot for the boys. So this now gives me my box plot, and we have the whiskers on as well. So the whiskers to the right here represent the, uh, the highest scoring, 25% of students. This one represents the lowest scoring. Um, let's see if we can just make that slightly uh, more are obvious to see. So what we'd need to do is label this up and state now that this was the boys. So let's just put that on there so we can get a good idea. Okay, that's slightly better. It's not brilliant. Again, the, the screen doesn't help. So let's write on that these now are the boys. So if we put on the boys, that gives me the boys. So let's go ahead and do the girls one. Now the girls lowest score was going to be on here. We've got now nine. So let's put that on. So we've got nine. Nine is going to be just here and I'll put it just there. So nine looks to be about there. That's fine. We'll put that on. Uh, the lower quartile was 38. So let's put that just there. Uh, median 42, which is going to be just there. We've got 42. Uh, upper quarter 51, which is going to be just there. And then the highest score was 96. Uh, so let's put that just there. So whoever got that one, they were the highest score overall. So let's have a look now at putting this on. And hopefully we'll be able to see it. And we can compare the distribution of these two data sets. So let's put that like that. That all... That helps me out. It's not brilliant, um, but we can make do. So let's just put that on and we can just make these. I can make them slightly clearer. So here's our second box plot and we can label that up. 
So let's write on here that these are the girls. We need to clearly show that. And then I'll just try and bold these out just a little bit. So let's put the girls on there. So if we just grab the lineup, let's see if we can make this a bit thicker. Right, that looks a bit better. Just be careful that you're not too clumsy with the thickness as we want to maintain the level of accuracy. So that just makes that look a little clearer to see on the screen. Okay, so we'll just move that into place. So we've got two different box plots here and we can compare the distribution of each data set. So if we look at the girls, then look at the boys, and we're going to make some comparisons in context. Whatever you do on these questions, don't just say the median is greater. Make reference now, and we'll put that just there. That looks something like that. So that's what we've got. So let's look at these now and make some comparisons. We can say that the most representative half of the boys scored higher than the most representative half of the girls. And that comes from the interquartile range. We can see now that the interquartile range just here for the boys, this is the middle 50% or the most representative 50% of the students. We can say from that, and I would make reference to the interquartile range, that the most representative half of the boys scored higher than the most representative half of the girls. We could also say that the boys generally did better than the girls as the median value was higher. So what we're saying is the average boy score was higher. We can see that from here. So here is the median for the girls, here is the median for the boys. So making reference to the median, the boys generally did better than the girls as the median was higher. We can say that the middle 50% of the girls, the most representative 50% of the girls, were more consistent than the most representative 50% of boys as we have a smaller box here and a lower IQR. So I'm making reference clearly to these measures of spread or a measure of central tendency. So in this one, I'm saying now that the middle 50% were more consistent. There was less variation from here. Now we can see that if we look at the interquartile range. So if we look at the IQR for the boys, we're going to have 21. So let's just put this here. The IQR is 21. That is now the 67 minus the 20, uh, 46, which is 21. If we look at the girls, the IQR, the interquartile range, and that is going to be 51 minus 38, which is 13. So we can see there's less variation. Whilst they didn't score as highly, generally speaking, they were more consistent. We can also make quite a nice statement here. We can say about three quarters of the girls scored less than 52 marks, whereas only 50% of the boys scored less than 52 marks. This point right here gives us 75% of the students. So this is the upper quartile. So if we look this 52 uh, marks out of 100, only 50% of boys dropped below that yet 75% of the girls drop below that figure. So that's quite a nice one to make, and that is in context. We could say the highest scoring girl scored more than the highest scoring boy. We can see that from there. But the lowest scoring girl scored less than the lowest scoring boy. We could make reference to the range. The boy's range, the total range, was now smaller. The girl's was larger. But again, we're looking more towards the interquartile range. We're looking at this representative, most representative 50%, and we're looking at the median. So there's a few comparisons in context, and we've gone ahead and drawn a box plot for both the boys and the girls. So there we go, about 19 or 20 minutes on box plots. You may be expected to draw them from a cumulative frequency curve, or you might just be given these five cent, uh, these five figure summaries. The five figures being the lower score, the higher score, the lower quartile, the upper quartile, and the median. And that's what we've got here.